Hello. How's it going? I'm not up to much right now. How are you? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's, um, this is Billy Core on, um, Friday, January 25th, 2013. And this is a video I've been wanting to make for quite some time. Say you want to ha have a virtual version of an old Packard Bell computer. Now, you might want to do this to just to test it or take something on the road with you on your laptop or your or you don't own a physical Packard Bell computer but you do own the software and you want to to recreate the original installation well today I'm going to show you how now this is for Windows 95 this is um I might do one for Windows 3.1 at a later date and today we're going to be using Virtual PC 2007 so first what we want to do is open up Virtual PC, I already have it open, see all the Virtual PCs I have, and that's a lot. And we're going to go up here and click New. It's going to take you through the new Virtual Machine Wizard. Better than the new Virtual Machine Ogre. You, if, you, if you've seen the Windows 95 training video cyber sitcom, you know what I'm talking about. I'm going to create a new Virtual Machine. I'm going to give it a name. So we're probably going to call it, let's call it a Packard Bell U2. Okay, and we're going to adjust our, um, our specifications here. Um, normally, a Windows 95 Packard Bell would probably be running 16 megabytes of RAM, so we'll set it to 16. A uh, new virtual hard disk, we want to create that. And for size, um, normally, um, I know my 822, my Legend 822 CDT had a 1.2 gigabyte hard drive, so we'll set it to that. Now it does it in, in megabytes, so to get 1.2 gigabytes, 1.21 gigawatts, not that, <laughs> we want to type in 1,200 megabytes. We'll click next and it will say congratulations, give yourself a pat on the back, buy yourself a cookie, you, you have completed the new virtual machine wizard. So we'll click finish and there's our new virtual machine right there. So let's check the settings. One thing we need to to check is if your computer supports it, that is if your um, processor supports it, you need to enable hardware assisted virtualization because Windows 95 will crash and burn without it. Believe me, I know it took me years to figure that out. So if, so if you're able to enable hardware assisted virtualization, you you can use it without it, but it's a very dreadful experience. And everything looks A-OK. -okay. So let's start the virtual machine. Don't need to adjust the BIOS settings or anything. And it's doing this because there's nothing on the hard drive yet and there's no bootable medium in there. So if you have a Packard Bell Master CD, go ahead and put it in your CD-ROM drive. Now, um, for me, that I have one over here. I'm gonna not nah, actually. I'll just use a um, an ISO image if I can find it. So uh, let's just select this one. It's a pretty generic one from 1995. And also now, in if this were a regular. Packard Bell computer, we'd use a Packard Bell um, Restore Floppy, uh, which is a bootable floppy, but on a virtual PC, that's really not recommended, so we'll just use a Windows 98 boot floppy, a standard Windows 98 boot floppy, which does just about the same thing. So we'll go ahead and reset the virtual machine, and it's going to ask us to start computer with CD-ROM support. We um, don't want to do that just yet, so we'll do without it. 
so, and we need to create a um, a partition on the hard drive. Now, for those of you who don't know what a partition is, say you take for instance a house, and a house has rooms. Right now, the hard drive on this computer does not have any rooms, so we need to partition it and give it a room. So let's go to F disk. Uh, do you wish to enable large disk support? Tell it no, because Windows 95, the original Windows 95 that is, cannot handle it. So um, we're now at the F disk menu. We want to go to the first option, create DOS partition or logical DOS drive. Hit one again. Do you wish to use the maximum available size? I will tell it yes. And it's going to tell us to restart, which we will do. Okay, now we'll, this time we will use um, CD-ROM support. Now, we need to format the hard drive. And to give it, well, I don't know, it just, it just makes it happy. <laughs> so we'll type in format, C colon, slash, S to, for, to transfer the system over. And it's going to ask us all data on non-removable disk drive C will be lost. T type Y to proceed with format. Okay, since the system transferred, you can put in a volume label if you if you want it. We'll just leave it out for now. And the hard disk is ready to have an operating system and put on it. Now, if if you haven't already, go ahead and put your Packard Bell Restore CD into the disk into your CD-ROM drive or mount it mount its ISO image. And we'll go to to the E director to the E drive which is the CD-ROM drive and we're going to type restore Oop, I can't type today <laughs> I'm going to type restore to access the restore program on Packard, on the Packard Bell Master Restore CD it's going to ask you to enter your hard drive format number if you have one go ahead and enter it but you really don't need it, so we'll just leave that out. And it's going to ask us if we want to restore a generic format, which we'll tell it yes. And and away we go. It's going to copy all the Packard Bell files to the virtual hard drive. Now this will probably take about 15 or 20 minutes to do. So I think for right now we will just um, pause the video and check back in a little bit. Oh yeah, I love my sweeper. Ah oh, crap. Yes, I want to restart. I gotta get this. Hey, wait a minute. Isn't there something I'm supposed to be doing? Oh yeah, the video, the video, the video. Yeah. Let's see how the restore's going. Oh, I see it's done. So, um... That means job well done, but we're not done yet. I'm going to hit OK, the enter key. And if done correctly, we'll just release the boot floppy. Uh, we'll keep the CD in there for good measure. Restart the virtual computer. Starting Windows 95, that's a very good sign. Oh yes, I love this picture. <laughs> Congratulations on the purchase of your new pa of your new Packard Bell computer. We are sure that it will meet your computing needs. Well, if it doesn't, I will go over to Sacramento, California, and th throw my Packard Bell through their window. Thank you for choosing Packard Bell. Why? You're welcome. Press any key to continue. Why? I think I will. Anyway, um, it's going to go through a little bit of boring um, device detection.
really don't need the game port joystick, but oh well. Okay, um, this is the interactive part of setup. This is where we type in our information. Type your name below if you like. You can also type the name of the company you work for. Okay, Billy Core Core Computer Services. Okay. I'll, I'll accept the license. Okay, we will, um, I know Microsoft doesn't care about Windows 95 anymore, but I like to play it safe, and so I'll be right back while I type in the key. Okay, it's, um, installing devices. It's installing devices now. I always love that little drum right there. go. Setup is ready to restart your computer. Now this is where setup gets a little bit interesting. If you have hardware virtualization enabled and your processor is more than two point something gigahertz, I forget what it is, you w there will be errors when you start Windows 95. Now my particular computer runs a quad core um, AMD Athlon 2 running at three point at, at three gigahertz. So we'll so we're gonna have to do this. I'll if I can remember where I got it. I'll post the link on in the video description. But we need to capture ISO image, and we're gonna find this one. Fix 95 CPU. This is a fix that will repair the problem that comes with high CPU speeds in Windows 95. It's, it's a bootable CD-ROM or you can also use a floppy. Okay, um, no we don't want to view the readme file but it's about to work its magic here. Going to replace a few files. Okay, um, press any key to restart your computer, then remove this disk so that Windows 95 setup can continue. And I love what it says there, long live Windows 95. True indeed, true indeed. So we'll hit enter, and we're going to remove the ISO image. And Windows 95 should boot up happy and normal. Okay, this is Packard Bell's auto detection. It's gonna find uh, all kinds of errors because this is not this is this is not a Packard Bell computer, but it really doesn't matter on virtual PC. Right now we're into Windows 95. Okay, it's going to set up our network. So we'll just type in computer name. Uh, uh, let's see, computer one work group. And in computer description, you can leave it empty or put whatever you want. I'll put in a name. Let's think. Uh, Uh, let's see. Okay. <laughs> 
I'm sorry about that. <laughs> uh, it's going to ask. This is because of that CPU fix we just installed. It's going to ask us if you want if you want to keep this file. Click yes. Okay. This is, this is where it gets. This is the home stretch, guys. Home stretch. Oh, it got sound. I thought it asked me for my um, time zone. Maybe I'm crazy. <laughs> Okay, we'll just uh, type in uh, Billy and Packerville Navigator should come right up or not. Yeah, boy, this is not good. That is not good at all. Oh boy. I don't know uh, what that was. I hope it doesn't do it again. Windows protection error. What in the world? Okay, this is not right. This is not right. Something has gone horribly wrong, obviously. Let me try installing this again. Here we go. Huh, isn't it supposed to tell me um, to take a lesson on using the mouse or something? That uh, must be a glitch, but as you can see, we have some video problems here that we need to correct. So we'll go into Windows, go right click My Computer, go to Properties. And we need to remove the standard display adapter VGA from Device Manager. Click OK. And we're now going to restart the computer. Or not. Oh, that's right. Um, whew, Faxworks is installed on here, meaning that, and since there's no Bell sound modem on here, the computers, the virtual computer that is, is going to go nutso. So we'll just go to Task Manager and close that out. And it should happily reboot now. And in a few moments, I will show you the proper way of removing fax works from here so you don't get any more strange little quirks. weird. We'll just do a manual reboot. Gotta love fax works. <laughs> you know, even on a physical Packard Bell computer, these days there's really no point to it, because most, for some reason, the modem part of Packard Bell sound cards crap out after a few years. But anyway, you can see the, I can already tell by looking at this right now that the graphics look a lot better. Ok, 
it's gonna I don't know why Windows 9X does this and everything is happy and peachy as we can see now first of all what we need to do is we're gonna shut down but shut down into MS DOS mode before Faxworks comes up and we're going to go into um, going to do change director no first we're going to type in del faxworks dot ini and the faxworks dot ini file has been deleted from the windows directory we're going to go to the root directory of the c drive and we're going to type deltree -E, faxworks and that's going to delete the faxworks directory yes we want to delete it and we'll go back into windows and everything should be a lot more reliable okay now um, we need to install the virtual machine additions to make everything a little bit more happier now the the bad part about this is is that Virtual PC 2007 no longer officially supports Windows 95. So if you try to install the Virtual PC 2007 additions into Windows 95, you will get countless error messages and you will cry yourself to sleep at night because you failed. <laughs> so what we need to do is if I can remember where I got them at, I'll put a link in the description. We need to install the Virtual PC Editions from the 2004 version. And, boy, I got a lot of ISO images. Okay, here it is. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. We might get a blue screen of death in, in a minute, I don't know. I hope not. <laughs> and we did. I don't know why. Okay, internal error in Windows installer. You know what? We don't need this. We do not need that. It's kind of unnecessary. If you can get it to work, go right ahead. But, um. Oh, so now we gotta put the. I'm sorry for all the blue screens of death in this video, folks. I'm not, I guess you can say I'm not very prepared. And now the video is messed up. And it's gonna go through this again. But I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that we're using the A version, or we're using the, uh, You know what, I'm just going to restart. You know what, I'm just going to do a hard reset. This video is not coming out like that, oh, guys. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But what I was saying um, earlier was Windows 95, RTM, and A are not virtual PC friendly. So the best thing to do is upgrade it to Windows 95B, which I already have a video on, and I'll um, put a link to the description to show you how to do this so you don't wind up like me just now and go nuts. <laughs> and then you can install the virtual PC editions, but until then, everything looks A-OK, -okay. and to prove it, we'll open up Packard Build Navigator. Welcome from Packard Bell. We offer you two computing environments to choose from, Packard Bell's Navigator or Microsoft Windows. You may also begin by taking a quick lesson on using the mouse. Yep, even in virtual PC, we got to take that lesson. <laughs> Welcome to Navigator's living room. All right, software room looks okay, info room looks okay, and the living room looks okay. 
So I think it's safe to say everything is okay, but we still need to upgrade to Windows 95B. I'll link you to the video in the description. For now, this is Billy Core signing off.